the universe. The Astral Express. Eons. Did I get dragged into a science fiction movie or something? The Stellaron thing in my body. Are you trying to catch the stars? <laughs> I've done stuff like that before. But... It wasn't stars for me, though. It was lights. Is this... the space station? Hello there. Not bad. It would have been even better if you didn't faint, but thanks to you, the Doomsday Beast was as tame as a kitten. It had no temper at all. Yes, and you are the hero. Get up when you feel better. Himeko wants you to go find her. I have something to do, so I won't go with you, all right? By the way, we should exchange beacons. If you get lost or something, feel free to text me. Okay, off they go. Bye. Nice. You're awake. I had March and Dan Hung stay by the express to keep an eye on things. It's almost time. She should be arriving any moment now. Well, I've only been gone, what, a few months? And the space station is already in this state? Welcome back, Herda. This is the true master of the space station. Genius Society number 83, Herda. At least give me a proper introduction. Genius Society number 83? Of all my outstanding achievements, that's what you want to mention? Yeah, up to speed yet? That place you all turned upside down? That's my property. So, this little twerp has the Stellaron now? Huh. Hmm. I'll have to take a good look. Hmm. Truly amazing! I built a whole space station just to contain this unactivated Stellaron and keep the blue from disaster. Yet someone was able to achieve that with this little twerp's body? How did they do it? Moreover, the Stellaron is still very stable in his body. Oh, you're right! This little one's body truly is strange. All right, I got it. But I'm still gonna call you little twerp. The space in my brain is too valuable to store people's names. Oh. Well, thanks for remembering my name, then. That's different. We have business with each other. Um, what was your name again? Uh, uh, forget it. But let's focus on the one who can store a Stellaron in their body. Can I bring him in for some research? That's not up to me to decide. You can ask him yourself. Study you, of course. 
Your body contains a Stellaroth, which in some sense is no different than storing a bomb. Who knows what might happen? Maybe it'll blow you to bits someday. You should be grateful that this genius is willing to help you out. I still have some interest now, but once that's gone, I'm not studying you even if you beg me. I'm very interested now. So there's almost nothing I won't accommodate. A Stellaron in your body? How interesting is that? Be grateful that I'm offering to help you out. This is a service even the IPC can't buy. You understand now? Herda wants you to stay in her space station. Well, I'm going to have to modify your wording here. This little twerp can only stay temporarily until the research is done. Or maybe I'll lose interest halfway through and they can just beat it. And after that? <laughs> Not my problem. <sighs> you also have another option. The Astral Express. If you want, you can leave with us. The Express has its fair share of experiences with Stellarons. The thing you're worried about and the answers we're looking for are one and the same. Besides, we can come back any time to let her to conduct her research. She's absolutely fascinated now. Hmm. Well, works for me. Keeps this subject fresh, too. And that way, I won't need to keep worrying about this little twerp all the time. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, give it some good thought. Just remember to come back often. Make an appointment in advance with Asta or Arlen so I can make time to study you. There's no need to rush into this, Herda. Asta's in the master control zone. Let's let him have a talk with Asta first and decide for himself. I'll be waiting for you on the platform. It's no hurry if you still have things to do or someone to see. Come find me when you've made your decision. What you're seeing is one of my remote-controlled puppets. They're all over the station. I just connect to one wherever I am needed. Enough chit-chat. I am working on a big project with a few colleagues. If we succeed, it will answer the ultimate question that's been puzzling us for thousands of Amber Eras. The truth about eons. Eons. Think about it. What mystical existences. Some eons used to be ordinary humans like you and me, but somehow they managed to obtain power beyond our imagination. They are mysterious, powerful, silent, and terrifying. It's hard to explain all the mysteries surrounding them. How were they created? Why were they created? What were they created for? Have you ever thought about these questions? To what? Are you even listening to me? We want to solve the mystery behind the eons. Right now, I want you to participate in this project. The four geniuses of the society wrote a program together. You see the big machine in the office? That machine contains a universe. Just like the universe we live in, but it's more streamlined and customized. I call it the metaverse. 
Oh, really? That's what my partner said as well. Fine. I am a team player. Then let's call it the simulated universe. Now go and experience it for yourself. I will guide you in the simulated universe to make sure nothing happens to you. I'll even give you a substantial reward. to repent. The truth of life and death, revealed in an instant. This sanctuary is but a vision! Ch the time is now. Rules? 
It's but a vision! We need a strategy. Move carefully. My turn. With me out here, how can we lose? See? Never heard of it. You have the worst luck running into me. Stay right there while I give you a present! Let's make it quick. I have no interest in stoking conflict. <laughs>
Keep at it. Keep at it. late to repent. I told you I could fight. The truth of life and death, revealed in an instant. This sanctuary is but a vision! Rules 
are made to be broken! Let's go. How about this? Clemency? Never. You have her. Let's make it quick. Yeah! Oh, poor you. Maybe you can keep it down? <sighs> Gotta try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move! Step aside. I have no you interest know who in I am. conflict. <laughs> Ever see a diamond this big? Oh, it's all yours! The truth of life and death, revealed in an in this sanctuary, is but a vision! I told ya I could fight! Let's go.
turn. Truth of life and death, revealed in an instant. This sanctuary is but a vision. Time to twirl. I told you I could fight. Do you know who I am? <laughs> See a diamond this big? It's all yours! the worst luck running into me watch this let's make it quick have no interest in stoking conflict. To me. The truth of life and death, revealed in an instant. This sanctuary is but a vision! My turn! Uh, rules are made to be broken!
We need a strategy. Move carefully. Never heard of it. The time is now. Try that again. You have the worst luck running into me. Gotta try hard sometimes. Check out this awesome move. My turn. With me out here, how can we lose? Let's go. What about this? Oh, poor you. Step aside. I have... Stay right there while I give you a present! Be honored to meet me. to me <sighs> let's make it quick what are you looking at it's gonna hurt clemency never heard of it the time is now <gasps> the truth of life and death reveal this sanctuary is but a vision
It's getting late. Where to now? So, have you thought things through? Then come with me. Hey, you over there looking dumbfounded. Yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. Pom Pom will only say this once. Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately. But this is the Astral Express. And everyone on here has their secrets. Since you chose to board, you can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble.
It's getting late. Where to now? Keep at it.
Looks good.
a gift from the stars. Watch this! Better up! This sanctuary is but a vision! Who's the lucky one today? With me out here, how can we lose? Reach the end of the story in your own way. We need a strategy. Move carefully. I don't remember inviting. Look out! You have the worst luck running into me. Let's make it quick. Clemency never hurt. A guest with no manner. <laughs> This is our chance. 
Good.
Good. It's getting late. Where to now?
This sanctuary is but a vision. <laughs> a gift from the stars. Watch this. Reach the end of the story in your own way. Step aside. I have no interest in stoking conflict. <laughs> A gift from the stars. <laughs> Let's go. to me. Are made to be 
be broken! Reach the end of the story in your own way. Clemency? Never heard of it. Watch this! Yeah. I think you're laying it on a little thick. It's getting late. Where to now?
What do you think? Does the Astral Express look the same as you imagined? Everyone on the Express is a passenger. We're all heading towards an unknown destination. Like we're traveling together. Maybe that's why the Trailblaze chose such a look. Oh, right. March and Don Hung should both be in their rooms right now. You can go look for them. You youngsters should get along well. We usually meet up here, but our personal cabins are in the next carriage. Also, don't mind Pom Pom's antics. They're actually pretty interested in you. It's just that we haven't had new passengers on the Express for a long while. All right, I won't steal Pom Pom's thunder. If you have any questions, just go ask our conductor. Oh, it's you. How do you feel? <laughs> Great. Looks like your stamina is really quite special. In any case, I have to thank you for saving March. <laughs> All I did was calm that thing inside you down temporarily. I don't want to frighten you, but the truth is, you won't ever be in the clear while it's still inside your body. However, as long as the Stellaron is still in your body, you should be careful what you do. I don't know if Himiko and I can suppress it again. But I won't bore you any longer. So much happened at the space station, you must be tired. There should be some time until the next warp jump, so Feel free to walk around and familiarize yourself with the environment. Himiko likes using the phonograph a lot. She says it can play melodies from the past. Welt likes collecting these jet black discs. It seems like they could be antiques. He'd be very happy if you could bring a few back. to bridge that generation gap. You recognize this as well? Uh, Himako always likes to bring back weird junk and try to fix it. That also got modified a bit. Don Hong's room? Oh, you mean the archives. Uh, he's just sort of living in there, I guess. I can't be bothered getting him out. March 7th's room is right next to the archives. You can visit him on the way. Oh? Why are you interested in her room? Ah, oh, Pom Pom remembers Himiko saying that you saved her. Mmm, very brave. Very foolhardy. But that is what a trailblazer should be like. March 7th's room is in the express sleeper compartment. She's always running around, so she might not be there. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the Express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. No matter where you go on this train, Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you. There seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. Who's there? Oh, 
It's you. The door is not locked. Come in. Can I help you? Feel free. This is open to everyone on the Express. While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the Express. I enter the collected data into the Archives databank. I try to catalog the people and places the Express encounters, and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already stored in the databank. Do give it a go. This is our chance. Stay alert. Let's go. Let's make it quick. Who's next? Batter up! How about this? Just a scratch. It'll take more than that. Uh, rules are made to be broken! You're out! You've outstayed your welcome! Decisive strike! So this is... I'll be entering any new information we encounter on future journeys, so drop by any time to check it out. We also have a shortcut on the terminal device. Seems like you have some deep misunderstandings about me. Uh, well, I think I know who caused that. I have matters to attend to. Feel free. The door is unlocked. Should I go in? Uh, better to wait till the room's owner comes back. Hem, hi. Took long enough. But at least everyone's here now. He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. Okay, everyone, hurry up and find a place to sit down. Try not to be like March, always running around the express like a headless chicken. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. Your first trip, so that should be double the excitement, right? 
<laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> I was excited the first time I experienced a warp jump, too. But I'm used to it now. Don't worry, you'll get used to it, too. And before you know it, you'll be a mature and dependable passenger just like me. The first step is to grab a hold of the root cause of your anxiety. Well, it is a little abstract, but basically you just need to pinpoint what's bothering you. The second step is to focus all your anxiety on that point. Seems like you're a natural. It's not easy to reach this level of enlightenment. Now for step three. Yank out that anxiety and cast it away with all your might! Really? I've never been able to do it successfully myself. What does it feel like? Like all your worries have been swept away? This is your first time experiencing the warp jump, so a little discomfort is unavoidable. If you're really anxious about it, I can stay here and have a chat with you. About everyone on the Express? Who would you like to know about? What's wrong? You look like you were about to say something. Oh, I think I know what you're going to ask. You've come to the right person. Oh, you want to know more about the Express? I'm glad. After all, it's an important companion of ours. The Astral Express was a tool created by Akivili the Trailblaze, who used it to transport themselves and the Nameless across the galaxy. It is rumored that there are other vehicles like it, but the Express has no such records. When I found the Express, its memory had been severely damaged, with much of its valuable information lost. All I know is that the Express is an aspect of creation built by Akivili themselves and used to travel the cosmos. As for how it was built and how it was damaged, I do not have an answer. The Express is traveling on a route that the Trailblaze once embarked on. The names of some destinations have been lost, but the first and final stops were both at Pagana, Akivili's homeworld. We speculate the Astral Express started its journey from Bagana, stopping at each destination along the way before returning there for its next journey. However, the appearance of the Stellaron has caused a delay at each stop. There's a legend in the galaxy. The heart of Akivili themselves lies in the core of the Astral Express, providing it with the power to travel between worlds but I found no evidence of that aboard the Express. Besides, the Express existed before the Trailblaze fell. There's no way they could have had two hearts, right? However, it is likely that the Express possesses some sort of mechanism to transfer power from the Trailblaze. It wouldn't be possible with a normal Path Strider. The Fallen Eon. Deceased Trailblaze. Their passing is still a mystery, but of all the known eons, Akivili was the closest to mankind. In the data bank aboard the Express, it is recorded that they walked among the mortals, adventuring, fighting, and celebrating with them. 
Although they were an eon restrained by the Prima Mobile, Achivili enjoyed a freedom similar to us mortals. They were different from most. But their passing came so suddenly that it was thought they were killed by another eon. I don't believe that be the case. <laughs> the galaxy is endlessly vast. I wouldn't know where to begin, especially when you ask me like that so suddenly. <laughs> I've been to many different worlds, yet I still know very little about the galaxy, simply because it's too vast. As for its nature, there are a few theories that I can share with you. The most popular is probably the Cosmos Tree Theory, proposed by Xandar, emanator of erudition and the first member of the Genius Society. He compared the galaxy to an enormous imaginary tree, with its leaves being individual universes. Therefore, only eons who draw their energy from the imaginary and emanators who are blessed by eons can travel through the spaces filled with imaginary energy. That's why planets where civilizations exist are so similar. However, the theory has its flaws. Elias Salas, the 56th member of the Genius Society, invented remote detection, disproving that the imaginary is unique. This shook the foundation of the cosmos tree theory. There are other theories as well. The stretching theory, the heat torch theory, and the parallel imaging theory. The Riddlers claim the galaxy is just a dream, and IX's followers seem to like that claim. Eons are the most mysterious beings in the galaxy. All we know is that they ascended from the form of intelligent beings. As for the how and why, even the geniuses over at the Genius Society haven't the slightest clue. Upon ascending to eonhood, that being gains power over the paths, free to choose the allocation of imaginary energy however they wish, while suffering the restrictions of the Prima Mobile. The Eon of Destruction seeks only to destroy the universe, while the Eon of Erudition wants to find the answer for all that exists. Meanwhile, the Eon of Preservation continues to forge walls, and the Eon of Enigmata devotes itself to obscuring all that is known. A cloud of mystery shrouds the Eons. I heard Madame Herta recruited a team to try and solve the mysteries about them. Compared to the eons, the factions are much easier to understand. Mortals with the same objective gather together to practice their understanding of eons and paths. Many eons are unreachable, but the factions are close to us. After Akivili trailblazed across the galaxy, people became aware of the existence of other worlds. Gradually, more people started trying to use the power of the eons to travel between worlds. The Interastral Peace Corporation is a good example. They worship Klopoth, the Eon of Preservation, but somehow became the largest economic entity in the galaxy. Another example is the Genius Society. There are no shortages of eccentrics like Madame Herta who dedicate themselves to scientific research under the protection of the erudition. These factions possess the same power as us to voyage between worlds. It would be hard to travel through the galaxy without them. The birth of an eon gives rise to a path. The nature of the paths remains a mystery, leading us to draw an analogy in a way that mortals can understand. It's a philosophical concept of sorts. A person is considered to be on a path when their will overlaps with that path. If the person has a strong enough will, they can draw power from that path. Those who can do so are called path striders. Path striders possess extraordinary power, but are still insignificant compared to the eons, like a drop of water in a vast ocean. Sometimes eons will bestow a mortal with their power, making them an emanator of that eon. I should mention that once a path is open, it cannot be closed, even with the fall of its eon. That is how we are still able to travel across the stars, despite Akivili's passing. Trailblaze is our mission, and the source of strength that powers the Express to travel across the galaxy. 
explore the unknown world to continue our journey ahead. Understand the local culture and immerse ourselves within it. Establish a connection with the new world, rejoice with it and share in its fears. Connect worlds together, carving an endless path. This is your first time experiencing the warp jump, so if you're really anxious about it, I can... About everyone on the Express? Uh, who would you like to know about? <laughs> She's the owner of the Express. We joke around calling Pom Pom the conductor, but everyone knows Himiko is the boss. It all started with her encounter with the Astral Express, and they haven't been apart since then. She's extremely passionate, like a, a burning sun. However, she remains mysterious most of the time. Once in a while, you feel that she's burning herself out trying to accomplish her dream. Only someone like her is worthy of the Astral Express. I think Himiko's vision of her whole life revolves around uh, a very important dream. To be honest, I don't know when Pom Pom appeared. Uh, I think it was before I came to the Express. No, wait, maybe it was after. Pom Pom is like the spirit of the Astral Express. Whenever anyone on the Express needs help, they will appear immediately. It would be ill-advised to underestimate them. Pom Pom is terrifying when they get angry. Yes, it's terrifying. Dan Hung is a lonely child. He may appear distant and cold, but his heart is kind. Perhaps he's the way he is today because he spent so much time on the run. Sometimes he reminds me of myself when I was young. He used to work at the Xianzhou. We don't know what he's running from. He once told me that he didn't know either. All he knew was that something was chasing him and that he had to run. So he boarded the ship of a troop called the Morning Actors and escaped the IPC. After a while, he made his way to the Express and he's stayed here longer than anywhere else. Don't worry. No matter who or what wants to hurt Don Hung, we won't let them. Those who dare attack members of the Astral Express should be prepared to suffer the wrath of me and Himiko. 
Did Himiko tell you about March 7th? Um, she was trapped in ice, floating through space. We happened upon her and rescued her. It was a unique type of ice known as six-phased ice, a substance that adheres to imaginary law, meaning that external forces cannot change its form. Whoever sealed her inside the six-phased ice, no matter who it is, did so either to protect her or banish her. I believe she had been floating through space for some time. It's impossible to trace the origins of this phenomenon. When it's observed by humans, or should I say, once it begins to affect the physical world, it's already too late to reverse. It's like a sudden storm that appears on a calm ocean. This phenomenon causes the smooth journey through the expanse to be filled with dangers. The mechanism whereby this mutation and corrosion spreads is the Stellarons. It promulgated rapidly like cancer cells, so the International Peace Corporation named it the cancer of all worlds. They are the army ruled by the eon of destruction, Nanook. As Nanook's followers, they stand against all life and civilization and execute the will of destruction, disseminating chaos and calamity. Their actions cannot be explained by reason because their only motivation and purpose is to destroy. Fragmentums are a phenomenon of corrosion. The mainstream school of thought is that Stellarons catalyzed the appearance of fragmentums. All matter and space that comes into contact with the fragmentum will be turned into fragmentum creations. However, you don't have to feel too burdened. At the very least, the current state of the Stellaron in your body is very stable and will not cause distortion to the outside. What's wrong? <laughs> you look like... Oh. I...
The universe. The Astral Express. Eons. Did I get dragged into a science fiction movie or something? The Stellaron thing. In my body. Are you trying to catch the stars? <laughs> I've done stuff like that before. But... It wasn't stars for me, though. It was lights. When I first woke up after being rescued from the ice, I could see clusters of stars in front of me. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. Who knows? I don't remember anything before that. Who I am? Where I'm from? My name? It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Uh... <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about 10 minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you, things could get bumpy. Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself and falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you. Uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's over. <laughs> but I'm thirsty now. Hello? Hello, hello? <clears throat> All passengers, please return to your seats. The train is about to make the jump. Hold on, everyone. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. I won't fall over. Five, four, three, two, one.